$105. And remember, there's many ways for you to bet. The early bird 8 to 11, advanced wagering in the afternoon. And you can come early and mm -hmm. place your super bet wagers before the running of the fifth race. So you'll have yeah, some handicapping I, on the fifth race. Yeah, I think i got to give that one a try myself. 136000 I'll shoot for it. Good. Coming up right after this, we're going to preview tonight's feature. Maywood Park Racetrack is open all summer long to watch and bet Arlington Park thoroughbreds every day but Tuesday, post time 1.30. Air-conditioned comfort with large-screen TVs grace our grandstand. Table-side TVs and good food is the main attraction on our third-floor clubhouse. The chances of you getting rained on are 99 to 1, and you're the odds-on favorite to have a good time. Monday through Saturday evenings feature watch and bet harness racing from Sportsman's Park, post time 8 p.m. Watch and bet all the summer days and all the summer nights at Maywood Park. In today's competitive race of convenience store shopping, a nice solution is your friendly Gas City Family Pantry Store. For your automobile, Gas City features Platinum Plus, a 92 plus octane premium unleaded. Inside the modern Family Pantry Store, you'll find a great selection of everyday needs. Fresh brewed coffee, cold soda or beer, and video rentals. Next time you're in a hurry to pick up a few items, stop into a neighborhood Gas City Family Pantry Store, the better place to shop. For all Chicagoland race results, call Chicago's official racing hotline, 976-2121. Welcome back. Tonight is the Egyptian Grand, the feature in the eighth race. It's a purse of $50,300 for stake race for two-year-old fillies, Illinois conceived in fold. And we f have a field of nine, one and one A are an entry. But we're going to take a look at last week from Wednesday, July 1st, the eliminations. The first division of the elimination was a non-wagering race. So the race we're going to look at right now is the third race, the second division of the Egyptian Grand eliminations. We had a field of eight going to the half-mile pole. The leader is she'll be charming. Egyptian Sunrise is second the half mile, a minute and four fifths. It's she'll be charming the leader. Three deep there is Nata Cole to be second. Along the rail third to the three quarters, Egyptian Sunrise. On the outside, State Queen fourth. I'm adorable fifth. She'll be charming leads by two lengths, moving through along the inside. Egyptian Sunrise now second, starting to fade there is Nata Cole. Along the inside, I'm adorable third. The leader is She'll Be Charming. Egyptian Sunrise is second, State Queen three wide third. It's She'll Be Charming, the leader. Egyptian Sunrise now closing on the outside. She'll Be Charming, Egyptian Sunrise out there second. That She'll Be Charming. And it was the number five horse, She'll Be Charming, coming in first, Egyptian Sunrise coming in second, and Oh Promise Me coming in third. And they went the mile in two minutes and one and two fifths. Yeah, these are uh, young two year old fillies, so that was a nice mile for uh, She'll Be Charming, who looks like uh, she's going to be one of the favorites. The uh, next division we're going to look at was the third division. There was the ninth race that night, and the uh, field was, uh, the favorite in that race was French Frolic, number two, and uh, Astrology, number five, was the next choice. Uh, this is an excellent race. Let's pick up the action at the half-mile pole. Racing in third as they go over to the three-quarter mile pole. Mystical Beauty racing in fourth. The more on the outside, she'll be spicy, comes on fifth. Racing in six to the three quarters on the outside. Amish Shakers into the turn they go. Astrology the leader on the outside. She'll be spicy as second along the rail. French Frolic third. Astrology keeps a length lead on the outside. She'll be spicy moves up second. French Frolic along the rail third. Racing in fourth. Amish Shakers. It's Astrology, the leader by three lengths. She'll be spicy racing second, but it's Astrology in front.
again, the number five horse, astrology, coming in first with Daryl Busty in the bike. She'll be spicy with Ronnie Marsh and Mystical Beauty with Doug Hamilton. They went the mile in 159 and four. So you have your final field tonight for the Egyptian Grand. She'll be charming and French Frolic are one and one A entry. Oh, promise me coming in out of the second post position, True Companion, Egyptian Sunrise, She'll be spicy, Astrology, Lil Pole and Scarlet White. Yeah. I think that uh, I think Astrology's victory was uh, you know very impressive. I was a little bit disappointed with French Frolic last week, but again, these are just young fillies and they're still learning. And in the uh, Tribune, my odds, I made Astrology the slight favorite over the entry of She'll Be Chairman and French Frolic. And I think you got to also consider She'll Be Spicy, Ronnie Marsh uh, drives and Bob Farrington trains, and this horse is getting better. And as you know, Bob Farrington, excellent trainer, mm -hmm. does real well with these young horses. Ought to be a good race, and uh, I'll be back to talk about uh, some more of tonight's card after this brief timeout. Follow your favorites, Walter Paisley, Dave McGee, Doug Hamilton, Daryl Bossy, Stan Banks, Mark Aubin, Jim Curran. To be a part of this great sport, call the IHHA at 323-0808. And we'll see you at the races. And they're off. Now you can handicap the races like a pro with this brand new videotape. Be a winner handicapping the harness races with Mike Paradise, Chicago Tribune Harness Handicapper. Learn the six most important factors in handicapping. Find out when to bet and how much. 55 minutes of professional inside tips. Be a winner. Send $24.95 plus $2 postage and handling. That's $26.95 to Palm Tree Productions, Post Office Box 135, Department Z, Berwyn, Illinois, 60402. Sunshines, and we suspect it always will be. Welcome back. I've got one solid play for you, and we'll start right off in the first race with Ms. Noreen. Of course, her daily double key. Well, you talk about a sharp mare. She's really got it going good right now. She's won four straight at the same level, and I see this horse making it five in a row. This mare should be coming off the pace again. I like her chances of catching this field. I have a long shot to consider in the seventh race, and since this is the super bet, maybe we can get a part of it. The seventh race, of course, is the trifecta. True Brit is my long shot to consider. Now, uh, my top choice in the Tribune was Rorty's Fling, and I do think that's the horse to beat because she fits in very well moving inside. But True Brit is a lot better horse than she showed last time. She had some traffic problems besides any surprise in that race, had the lead, simply dominated that field, and she really wasn't in contention. I expect a better effort, so let's use her in the trifecta and the part of the super bet. Of course, this weekend, the attention is going to be focused on the American National and Eleanor. This is an exceptional, an exceptional field. It's a three-year-old Philly stake, carrying a purse of better than $221,000. Why don't you run down the field for the fans? Okay, we have a 1 and 1A entry by Ray Remen. It's Halcyon and Oriental Avenue. Number 2 and 2B are another entry from the Steve Waller Racing Stable. Legacy of Love and Jaguar Lomont. Tantalizing Hanover New Creation with local driver Walter Paisley. We have a local favorite, Southern Society, Doug Larson. Pacific and Tom Harmer, which is a George Steinbrenner and Charles Day horse. They always like going to the winner's circle. Diana Lynn Lobel. Time well spent with Bill, O'Don Bill O'Donnell on the bike, which is a horse that has been written up in the paper and is uh, pretty of well course. known to some Bill of the Chicago is, uh, fans. Bill is one of the best in the country. He certainly is. And in the ninth post position with no driver assignment is Sharon again. So we have an exciting field. A lot of horses coming in from out of, out of town. Right. Now, the, uh, what we mentioned there was program number. The post positions are different, and that's going to make a little bit difference as far as the strategy, because mm -hmm. time well spent is really his post position 10. So she'll be starting. Trailing the two. She'll be trailing uh, the one horse, Tantalize uh, Hanover. Mm -hmm. This Halcyon's interesting, because last year, this horse was the two-year-old filly of the year, won the Breeders' Crown, 
earned seven hundred thirty-four thousand dollars in her first year. That's not bad. Mm -mm. Uh, time well spent uh, earned a meager five hundred twenty thousand dollars. Well, they're the closest in, in terms of purse right. earnings. And of course, time well spent has got four straight wins. Now, what about our local? P what about Pacific? Well, Pacific I think is so well, strong. Beat Annie Crombie. Pacific drawing the seven holes is going to make things a little bit difficult. The thing she's got going in her favor is she knows the track. Uh, when you have 11 horses, you know, everybody's going to be out and going. You're going to expect a lot of speed, and, uh, you know, she's going to either have to hope for, a, hope for an early hole or try to get brought up. Uh, I haven't done my line on this yet, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm sort of hedging until tomorrow before I decide who I'm going to take and that type of thing. But I think Halcyon definitely has to be considered. New creation this year is much improved as a three-year-old. Winner of seven out of nine races and dropped the photo. She has a 154 and one mile at the Meadowlands. And I heard a lot of talk, good talk about this horse. And I think you also have to uh, consider uh, the uh, Diana Linlow Bell, Ronnie Mars is going to drive, who last time out had the 14th hole, so we'll throw that out. Real good race. We'll get more into this thing tomorrow. Okay, sounds good. Now, Southern Society is coming off, you know, really bad performances. I'm kind of surprised to see... Well, she's, she's been a little off, mm -hmm. but uh, they didn't put her in unless they think she had a good shot. Right. So we're going to hope to see you at the races and bet on that big super bet carryover pool and watch the Egyptian Grand tonight, and we'll be back tomorrow with more handicapping of the weekend's races. Good night. State Queen three wide third. It shall be charming the leader. Egyptian Sunrise now closing on the outside. She'll be charming Egyptian Sunrise. News. Interviews. Handicapping. Hosted by Mike Paradise and Eleanor Flavin. Good evening and welcome to Chicago Harness Racing. I'm Eleanor Flavin. We have some changes in the weekend's races and Friday's first race, the number three horse, Mikey Mohawk, take Tony Morgan off and make the driver Merv Chup. And in the third race, number six, the gang's kid take Morgan off and put John Reese in the bike. In Saturday's 10th race, the number seven horse, Gin Lover, is scratched. The horse is sick. That means that Thoreau will come off the also eligible list and race in post position number seven. We're going to take a look at last night's Egyptian Grand. It was a stake for two-year-old fillies. Illinois conceived and fold a purse of $50,300. And we're going to pick up the action at the half-mile pole with the call of Gil Levine. They go to the three quarters on the front end. The leader, Egyptian Sunrise. French Frolic moves three wide to be second. Dropping back, she'll be charming. Astrology moves up third, racing in fourth to the corner. Oh, promise me. Now it's French Frolic taking the lead. Egyptian Sunrise is second. Astrology comes on three wide, third. True Companions on the move. Along the inside, oh, promise me, they turn for home, astrology on the outside. Here comes True Companion down along the rail, Egyptian sunrise, that's astrology taking the lead. Moving up to be second, oh, promise me, on the front end, the leader is astrology, oh, promise me, racing second with Lil Paul third. And it was astrology with Daryl Bussey in the bike coming out of post, possession, post position number six coming in first. Oh, Promise Me and Tom Insko coming in second. And Lil Pole with Stanley Banks in the bike coming in third. Last night's Egyptian Grand Stake Final went in 159. It was astrology's best mile. It was one second off the track record for two-year-old fillies. And she did it in spite of being parked out every step of the way and came three wide in the final turn. There's good news for followers of the former free-for-all pacer Black Shadow. The six-year-old son of Shadow's finale has been plagued with lameness through much of his career. He's coming back to the races. He won his qualifier earlier this week in two minutes, the fastest race of the day. Last season, Black Shadow won 13 of 22 races for trainer Bob Farrington and earned $128,360. He had a string of six straight victories, including a 156 and one-fifth mile win in the finals of the B.S. Skipper Pacing Series at Hawthorne, in which he defeated the 1985 Illinois Harness Horse of the Year, Hothead. Look for him in a couple weeks. And this weekend, the Super Bet carryover going into Friday night's program is $165,000 plus. So come out to the races and, and bet that big Super Bet. Coming up right after this, 
on Mike Paradise and Tony Salvaro handicapping the weekend's races. Maywood Park Racetrack is open all summer long to watch and bet Arlington Park thoroughbreds every day but Tuesday, post time 1.30. Air-conditioned comfort with large screen TVs grace our grandstand. Tableside TVs and good food is the main attraction on our third floor clubhouse. The chances of your getting rained on are 99 to 1, and you're the odds-on favorite to have a good time. Monday through Saturday evenings feature watch and bet harness racing from Sportsman's Park, post time 8 p.m. Watch and bet all the summer days and all the summer nights at Maywood Park. In today's competitive race of convenience store shopping, a nice solution is your friendly Gas City Family Pantry store. For your automobile, Gas City features Platinum Plus, a 92 plus octane premium on leaded. Inside the Modern Family Pantry store, you will find a great selection of everyday needs, fresh brewed coffee, cold soda or beer, and video rentals. Next time you're in a hurry to pick up just a few items, Stop in a neighborhood Gas City Family Pantry store, the better place to shop. For all Chicagoland race results, call Chicago's official racing hotline, 976-2121. Welcome back. I'd like to welcome my usual Friday guest, Tony Salvaro. And Tony and I will take some stabs at tonight's big races and, of course, Saturday. Tony, I've got two solid plays tonight in the fourth race, Possessive Nature in the eighth Holiday Mountain. Now, Possessive Nature, you might remember, did very well for Jim Dennis, and then in the eliminations, broke stride, and therefore couldn't make tonight's finals. Right. Dale Lightman is getting the call. I think that horse looks good. And Holiday Mountain, we were talking before we went on the air, it's not very often you get a horse that's in the invitational ranks in for a price, not right. cheap. I think it's carrying a $60,000 price tag, but uh, he looks pretty well placed in there. Certainly does, and uh, Holiday Mountain, uh, you wonder, well, is, he, is there any physical problems with a, with a good horse like that? You look at the rest of the field, Mike, some of them don't look like they're worth 25000 <laughs> I'm glad so, you said that. <laughs> so so it's, it's going to be a tough race to figure, and uh, Holiday Mountain could be a standout. Yeah, I think he's going to go right to the top. Now, Tony, we're going to take a look tonight, uh, feature the Jimmy Sunshine. And, of course, uh, it's a well-balanced field. Tony, let's take a look last, uh, last week. He'll be proud. Mark O'Mara came in, and uh, this horse was parked out every step of the way and still made it look very easily for Mark. And of course, the mile was a very quick time, and 57 and I believe four. Mm -hmm. And uh, Walter Paisley's gonna be in the bike tonight on that horse. Looks like that's one of the horses to beat, along with B. Jewel. And looking at B. Jewel last week, Ole Insko was driving, and an impressive victory. Tony, the horse came off the pace, drew away in the stretch, ended up winning the race in 57 and three. Of course, Ole's got another horse to drive. Yes, he does. And uh, I think the key in here will be the, the speed out of the gate. Uh, look for Paisley. He loves to leave. Uh, he'll be proud to park the mile, as you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So it looks like he can leave and be used. Texas Real Deal has the rail. Mm -hmm. This horse may have a lot to say about it. It should be a very fast mile. I look for uh, uh, he'll be proud to come right back. Okay. You know, you, I, I picked he'll be proud. What bothers me on he'll be proud was he looked very rough. Uh, last week. He was racing on a mile track. Now he raced, raced on a cautious uh, smaller track. Mm -hmm. And there is that chance of a braking problem. And, uh, you know, it could happen. I think B. Jewel has an outstanding chance. Yes. And everybody's forgetting about termination because of the 9 0. Right. Four for four. Doug Larson uh, has this horse very, very sharp. And the price should be inviting. So mm -hmm. this looks like a very competitive race. Friday's uh, co feature, and we're talking about the, uh, the handicap. Tony and Fitch, moving violations, stir fry, Sammy Blue Chip, and sometime Lobel. Why don't you give me a pick in that race? You know, it's a short field, mm -hmm. but it's tough to me to pick a winner. A horse I do like a little bit, and that is sometime Lobel. Uh, there's only four horses to beat, and uh, I know the way you thought about the race, mm -hmm. Mike, he's going to have to come first over, right. come from behind. But when you have to do that, and there's only four in front of you, it's not that, that uh, hard a task. And uh, this horse could be on a roll and a great driver, so I look for him to be there. And I took Stir Fry in the Tribune, and Stir Fry, I think you remember, and a lot of our fans remember, uh, was at Sportsman's Park last year, was a winner. He went in at Hazel Park in 55 and 1 and 54 and 2. Hazel Park is not as quick as this track. That was very impressive to me. The key, I think, for Laverne is he has to be up close, preferably on top. I don't think he can come from behind to beat sometime Lobel. And I think he also wants to get ahead of moving violation, who sometimes breaks. Right. So I look for him to leave. I look for Sammy Bluechip to leave. Mm -hmm. And that looks like a very competitive race. Yes. 
And of course, we got the big one coming up Saturday, the American National, and we'll have something to say about that after this brief timeout. Follow your favorites, Dale Heitman, Ron Marsh, Randy Jacobs, Doug Larson, Laverne Hostetter, Carl Purcelli, Brian Pelling. To be a part of this great sport, call the IHHA at 323-0808. Hey, we'll see you at the races. And they're off. Now you can handicap the races like a pro with this brand new videotape. Be a winner handicapping the harness races with Mike Paradise, Chicago Tribune Harness Handicapper. Learn the six most important factors in handicapping. Find out when to bet and how much. 55 minutes of professional inside tips. Be a winner. Send $24.95 plus $2 postage and handling. That's $26.95 to Palm Tree Productions, Post Office Box 135, Department Z, Berwyn, Illinois, 60402. All right, all right, where are they? Uh, who? The two chicks who ordered the Diet Cokes. Oh, the ones with the funny swimsuits? You know, Arthur, I think they like us. Oh, uh, really? Uh, why? Why? This is the third Diet Coke they've ordered today. Oops, there they are. Uh, straighten your bow tie. Oh, yeah. <coughs> well, hello, hello, hello. Diet Coke with 100% NutraSweet. One calorie, just for the taste of it. Boy, they sure look good in tail. Yeah, of course, uh, so do we. <laughs> Cute, yeah. Welcome back. Tony, Saturday's big race, the American National for three-year-old tasting fillies, a purse, $221,200. I've, uh, I've been at Sportsman's Park since 74, and I covered for the mm -hmm. Chicago Today before that for a few years, and quite frankly, this is the best three-year-old filly race I can remember. It certainly is, and although the favorites look good, it is wide open, and uh, uh, the horse I like is New Creation. Mm -hmm. Walter Paisley will be getting a catch drive in this race. New Creation only lost twice this year out of nine starts. Both times were on an off track. Both times were narrow misses, a photo, a neck, mm -hmm. and three parts of a length. Mm -hmm. uh, you, she, she won't be a long shot, but Mike, uh, you just mentioned how long you've been here. And uh, Paisley, throughout the years in these big stake races, has always done well yes, as a catch has. driver. Yes, he has. You know, Tony, let's take a look at Pacific's last race uh, on June 29th. And Tony, in this race, she had a hold off Annie Crombie. And you know, Annie Crombie, one of the outstanding fillies in the country, she dug in in the stretch. She held her off 154 and 4, which mm -hmm. was a track record. And she's going to be very tough in this race. Yes. Now, if you look at your screen, you'll see the odds, as I will have them in tomorrow's Tribune. And you can see I had a little tough time trying to decide who's going to be the favorite. I made the entry, Halcyon Oriental Avenue, 3 to 1. Time well spent at seven to two, Pacific at four to one, New Creation at nine to two, and Tantalized Hanover at five to one, and then we got some long shots. Tony, I gave Time Well Spent the edge, mm -hmm. and we're talking about a possible trip. Even though he is uh, number eight, he's in post position ten. Yes. Right. And who right. do we have in front of him? Tantalized Hanover, who comes off a of fifty-five win in Sayota. So I'm looking, to, with Bill O'Donnell, you're talking one of the best. I'm looking maybe the possible trip here. Yes, and you know, uh, it may be interesting, too, mentioning uh, Pacific again. Mm -hmm. A couple of uh, a couple of weeks back here at Sportsman's, when Pacific was like a one-to-five favorite, she broke stride. And I later found out uh, Pacific, if she sits in a hole, she's all right. If another horse pulls next to her, uh, then she starts to panic a little bit, and this is why she broke stride. Tommy Harmer knows this. He doesn't want to sit in a hole. He wants yeah. the front. Everyone else knows it. Fast mile, folks. Well, you know, when you have 11 horses right. and you're going for $200,000, he won't be the only, only one leaving. Everybody's <laughs> right. going to be going out. And that's why this makes it such a competitive race. Because, Tony, with those kind of fractions, anybody can win. Right. Now, I'm looking for the another track record. I right. think the mile of 55, the 54 and uh, 4 record of Pacific can go if the weatherman cooperates. And like I said, I'm going to give time well spent the edge. Let me just mention one thing. Halcyon and Oriental Avenue, very, very tough entry. Right. Let's take a look at Saturday's ninth race, the Invitational, Samoway, Prince Charbet, Ultra Bright, Tri-Nitro, Pocono, Lobel, and Charge Plate, and your selection. Mike, I like uh, Tri-Nitro. Tri-Nitro has lost a couple of weeks in a row. It's a well-known fact. Tri-Nitro has to be driven hard and, and driven often hard uh, after a half mile. 
Again, it could be a big weekend for Walter Paisley, and this horse uh, will feel the whip after the half for sure. This horse may win tonight. Of course, Charge Plate, uh, back in the invitational ranks where he won last time. Prince Charvet is going to have the lead, Tony. I know they're going to try to keep him away from it, but I think he's going to have the lead, and they're going to have a very, very tough time catching Brian Pelling. This looks like another, uh, another good race. And I expect a real quick mile in here, maybe overshadowed because of the American National. Yes. Well, as Eleanor mentioned to you, the Super Bet's up to $165,000. Excellent card Friday, excellent card Saturday. So we hope to see you at the races. Good night. Up third racing.